guys, it's Andy, personal trainer in the writing gym. Thank you so much for listening to the Writing Gym Podcast. Today, Annalise is going to speak with Donna St. Louis, who is a serial entrepreneur who founded three multi-million dollar businesses. Today, Donna travels the globe as an international speaker and success coach. Her and Annalisa are going to talk about everything in this video, and she's especially going to explain how to create a culture around your brand, move out of convince mode, filter out your ideal clients, and target the people that you really want to work with. If you find any of these tips really interesting and feel like you could do more with your writing, make sure and book a call to speak with Annalisa about where your writing is and how she can help you. Go to www.datewiththemuse.com slash book a call. Thank you so much and happy writing. Hey there, writers. I'm so, so, so excited to be coming at you today with my friend Donna, who's an amazing businesswoman. She's doing amazing things, and she's really grown her business with the power of a book. So welcome, Donna. Thank and, you. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and what you're doing. Absolutely. So I am a business growth expert, but you know, a lot of people say that and they have all these tools and stuff, but mine actually starts with mindset because can't really help you if you can't think. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I start with mindset and then I have very super simple, actionable uh, strategies that people can use so they don't, they don't screw up really. And then we go from those actionable strategies to putting implementing those and then having repeatable accountability for your success, right? Because right. people yeah. have a plan, but then they don't implement it or then they implement it, but there are parts that they get a little stuck in and, and they can't keep moving it forward. So that's where the accountability part comes in. So it's everything from cradle all the way up to stuff. Wonderful. And so the work that you've been doing, we're not going to do any name dropping right. today, but I mean, you've been working with some names that have preset them. I mean, you right. know these, these corporations, these yeah. names. So right. I mean, you're, you're functioning at a very high level. Right. And part of what got you to that level of success was book writing. So tell right. us about your book writing life and how that really worked in your business. So, so one of the things that was really critical for me was, you know, you know, I grew a business to $250 million and then sold it. And one thing that happened for me is I needed to make sure that for, this is my third business. So clearly a serial entrepreneur. And the funny thing is when I got to that third business, I completely forgot to go back to my own blueprint. <laughs> Crazy how that works. So I thought it would be a smart thing to do, number one, to put that blueprint somewhere where it's going to live forever, number one. Number two, there are you know, millions of people who want to be entrepreneurs who really want to use this information. I don't necessarily always have the time to sit and go step by step with, with them you know, through the blueprint. So it also put it out there, gave me some credibility, acts as a business card, and it also filters out the people that I don't want to work with. Right. <laughs> right? So, right. And those are all really important parts right. of the book. So I think what you're saying is it, it creates content that's evergreen. Yes. Um, but then it also really helps. And, you know, this is funny because beginning entrepreneurs have a hard time figuring out who their ideal client is. Right. But once you get to a very advanced position in in your entrepreneurial right. life, you know who your ideal client exactly. is and you want to filter that mm -hmm. out. And the book, I think you're saying, is a really powerful tool. Right. And to what, I think what people forget, though, is that a lot of times the book that you're writing is a book for you first mm -hmm. or a book for who you used to be. Because, again, I, you know, here it is, my third business. It, it shouldn't be rocket science, right? Like, <laughs> why am I doing everything from scratch? So just to be able to put it on paper and go back to it and say, okay, duh, this is what I'm doing. And, and then follow that along and then have other people that now can call me and they're speaking the same language as is in the book. So we can kind of expedite things, but it also helps me get rid of people that I don't want to work with. So it's a, it's a fantastic business card um, that has definitely led to, you know, quantifiable results. You raise an interesting point that no one said yet in this interview series around you know, creating a culture around your brand right. and that jargon that's specific to your methods right. and what you're doing. Right. Um, and, you know, I think that that probably creates a lot of loyalty for the people right. who want to Oh, yeah. Them. Oh, yeah. There are people, you know, there's one of the strategies is about what you should be doing every day within your business and then having an accountability and mastermind group to help you be accountable for what you should be doing every day in your business. 
And it's interesting to see how many people have started an accountability and mastermind group in order to grow their business. And they'll call me back and they'll say, Oh my gosh, I can't, you like, I'm, I'm literally growing my business by 40% just by following this. And so I think one of the things that really becomes important is now people are speaking. They're going, oh, I'm in my 6 a.m. group. <laughs> Most people think that meeting at 6 a.m., God forbid, because I don't even know what happens in the world at 6 a.m. So <laughs> people are up, right? You know? And so it's kind of funny because people who hear, oh, you're in your 6 group or your 6 a.m. group, there is a whole methodology and terminology and language that goes along with it that people who are in are in and people who aren't are going. What is, what is that? You know. So when you think about your business life, sort of pre-book and post-book, what do you see as the differences? Well, how did that book help change your business life? The book, number one, was a big part of credibility because now people knew that I had actually put thought to my methodology. It wasn't something that I was just winging, mm -hmm. right? So now my expertise is written down, something that they can go and pre-implement even if they wanted to and then come back to me. So that was very helpful. Whereas before, I was constantly in this convince mode where I was trying to convince people this was happening. Now is at the point where I was conveying new knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest differences. So my filtering of clients became much easier because many times I could say, even someone who wanted to work with me as a coach, they wanted to work with me as an advisor or they wanted to work with me as an accountability partner. I could quickly say, well, hold on, do me a favor. Just go and take a look at the book first. It's not even 200 pages, right? And the first half is content. The second half is a workbook, right? So we're really talking about 100 pages. And so someone would say, oh, I don't want to read the book. Then you're not going to do the rest of the work. If you can't read 100 pages. Right. So now it helped me filter out clients I really don't want to work with. Right. That's, that's really powerful what you're saying. And so were there other ways, you know, that are maybe more measurable or quantifiable? Like was there a significant income difference or oh, yeah. client base difference for you? Yeah, because, uh, you know, I use it as a marketing tool. So I could actually send it out to clients that I wanted to work with. Um, what I love is the free implementers that would then come back and go, you know, I really want someone to hold my hand. And so there was a significant uptick. In other words, I'm not worried about just people going to my website and sending them a link and say, go to my website. I'm actually sending them a book, highlighting a passage that I think they should read. And then saying, I think this is the part that you're having a challenge with. And then those people actually go, Oh my gosh, that is. So now I have a better way of targeting people that I want to work with. That's really interesting. You know, you called it a marketing tool. And I think yes. that that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs overlook, right? They think right. that you're just going to write a book and it's going to have their name on the cover and it's going to be cute and sweet. But it's so much more than that. It's, right. It's definitely, it is a, a business card on steroids in many <laughs> ways, right? And so I'm so crystal clear that my goal is to put a trillion dollars in the economy. And the only way that I can do that is by building a million millionaires. Okay, well, how do I do that? I need to get this in their hands Right. So this is a marketing tool and, and it's more than paid for itself in other ways where people have just hit me up and go, OK, I, I bought your book, you know, and that's fine. But for me, initially, it's a marketing tool that has led to significant income. Yeah. And I love it that you say that it's more than paid for itself because oh, there yeah. is, there's a time investment. There's a financial yeah. investment to making a book happen. Right. And you might not see that right away in right. month one, right? But if, if this is a long-term investment right. in your business. And right, you yeah. Go. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I get people all the time who are just like, they're going to sit down and they're going to write a book and they're going to be rich like in a month. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like 30 days, boom, you know. And, I mean, that'd be great, but let's be a little bit more realistic. Number one, it's not a cakewalk to write a good book. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. There are a ton of people who can write they, look, there's a ton of people who put words on paper, right? And there's a ton of people who put words on paper, but then that's only one part of the whole thing. What about the marketing piece? What about hitting your target market? What about all the editing and laying out and formatting? What about making sure that content actually flows? What about not having this story that you kind of did a segue and forgot to come back to? So you got this whole hanging piece out there. People going, well, wait, what, what happened? Um, what about making sure all your graphics are on? What, there's a whole lot that goes into a book more than just your content, more than just putting your intellectual capital on paper. And you raise a really good point with that, right? Because we've all seen that self-published book oh with the God. graphics yeah. all over the, or the typesetting is all wrong. Typesetting is wrong. And, and that reflects on a person's brand and their right. message. Well, what does it say about you? Oh, I got to tell you. So, you know, so 
I had done this book all by myself, you know, put on my big girl pants that day, woke up, did it by myself, and um, sent the book out to do the whole publishing thing. This was obviously before I met you. <laughs> and um, one of the, a, a colleague of mine got the book. She's reading through it. She's actually going to follow it. And she said, I don't know if you know, but you ever seen, I mean, like, I know you and like, you're one of those people who's really nitpicky and there's a significant number of typos in your book. And I'm like, what? And she goes, and even on your back cover. And I'm like, what, what, you know, and I've had it edited and I go and look and I had submitted the wrong version and had them printed. Oh. Right. So, <laughs> right. I just... I just made a mistake. I, I, I named the old version, the new version, and completely screwed up. I mean, obviously, that didn't happen on you, no. but all by my solo. Right. And it cost me more money than it would have had I just gone to a professional. Right. Yeah. And that's a really good point. Right. I was going to a professional, and, and you said you had an editor. Like, right. even having that outside set of eyes, because we can read our own manuscripts. Right. Thousands and the editor had done their job. I, right. <laughs> I went and screwed up. And, it, and it's just one of those things that what people don't realize is that you actually get a little bit of visual fatigue, or, or we call it project fatigue. Right. You're working with this project. You've been working on this project for a while, and after a while, you just can't see the the stuff anymore. You can't see that there's a word missing because you know the next word that's going to be there. And so you miss that. And so what happens is you end up getting kind of like this project fatigue where you can't see it anymore. And having another set of eyes is so critical because they're seeing it fresh, fresh for the first time, and they know. You know what you meant to say, but... Now someone else has to know what you mean to say. <laughs> yeah. So, Donna, we've heard a lot about your book. Why don't you remind us what the title oh. is? I'm sure we can find it on yes, Amazon. Yes, Amazon, yep. It's called The Six Strategies of the Million... I'm sorry. The Six Kick-Ass Strategies. <laughs> Gotta add that in there. Of the Million Dollar Entrepreneur. Awesome. I love that. All right. So, definitely we'll have to check that out. Now, you and I have been working together for three days or yeah. so uh, here. And so you know a lot about my program and what it is that I offer. Yeah. So, you know, if there are people out there who are thinking, gosh, I really want a book. I really want to boost my business. Really what I want for myself. What would you say to those people based on what you know about yeah. how I operate? Well, the first thing I would say is if you, you know, your name is going on your book. That's your name. You only get one of those, by the way. Like, right. like for the most part. You know, unless you have an alias and witness protection. But <laughs> for the most part, you only get one name. And so your name is going on this product and this product is going out there. And once it's out there, it's out there. And so it's not just about doing something, you know, well, it's about doing it right. It's the whole thing put together. So you don't want to just have a product. You want to have a good quality product that reflects you and who you are that you put out in the world. And I see people make huge mistakes just on their cover or they don't know all the details that goes into really getting this done or they don't realize that while you might be a decent writer, there is a big difference between being a decent writer and a great writer and then finding your voice and having it on page. So there's a whole lot of things that goes into this. And then working with someone who not only has done it, but has done it several times for several people very successfully, you're getting all of that weight, all of that experience to your book. There are lots of people that don't have that. And now with every, you know, Tom, Dick, and Jane out there being able to just take something and throw it out there, literally throw it up, you want to make sure that yours stands out as quality. And that's what you bring to the table, that ability to deliver something that's high quality that meets your target market. Well, yeah. Thank you for that, Donna. And thank you so much for your time. And this message will be sure to check out your book on Amazon. And um, please bump. Found it. Right. <laughs> thank you.